We began our last lecture by looking at the distance versus time graph of a trip to my grandmother's house. But there's another way that we could view that same trip. And that's what I'd like to introduce next. So let's get rid of the map. And here's another way to view that trip. Instead of distance versus time, we're going to graph the rate, which we learned in the last lecture was more precisely called the velocity. We're going to graph that versus time. So let's equate the one graph with the other. We had that last graph, and we found that for this straight line, that the velocity was, do you remember, it was uh, 50. And so in a velocity versus time graph, the corresponding line looks like this. Just a straight line right across the top. Now, before when we graphed distance versus time, we found that the rate, the missing element of d equals rt, that the rate was hidden in the slope. So now the question is, since we explicitly have the rate and the time, where is the distance hidden? Where is the distance hidden in the velocity versus time graph? Well, we can uh, get a sense of that by looking at the area under the velocity versus time curve. We have an area here. It's a rectangle. What's the area of a rectangle? Well, it's the height times the width. And what is the height? height times width, which is uh, 50 times, what's the width? 4. 200. Hmm. Well, hopefully that 200 rings a bell for you. You realize that that's the same as the 200 miles. Do the units work out? Yes, they do, because this is miles per hour those are the velocity units times hours. So it gives miles. So here's the thing we've just learned. When we have the velocity versus time or the rate versus time view, the distance is hidden in the area under the curve. Okay? So let's just write that out. In R versus T graphs, The D is the area under the curve. Although, as we've just learned, this is a rather unusual sort of area because the units for this area, which I'm going to put in quotes, are length units. So it's not quite the conventional area that you're used to. And so in switching over to a view of velocity versus time instead of distance versus time, we've learned a couple of things. One, in the R versus T graph, the distance is the area under the velocity versus time curve. And yet, it's not quite the area we're used to because the units aren't area units anymore. Well, let's see what else we can learn by looking at the other two graphs that we previously worked on in distance versus time. Let's see what they look like correspondingly in velocity versus time. So in this first one, we were moving along at the rate of about 70 miles an hour. Okay. And then we came to a complete stop, and then we proceeded for the last hour at 60 miles an hour. So what's that going to look like in the velocity versus time graph? Well, we're going to go 70 miles an hour for the first two hours. That's that. And then we stop. That means we go down to zero velocity for an hour. 
And then we're back up to what? We're back up to 60 miles an hour for the last hour. So there's what that graph looks like. And the area under this curve tells us how far we've traveled. Let's try another. Let's try what we uh, had for our third and final graph when we were graphing distance versus time. Okay, this was the graph we had. And so at first the velocity was 75 miles an hour. And so we were way up here for the first two hours. Just like that. Then what? Okay, now this is a little bit interesting because at this point our velocity became negative. Uh, what was our rate? It looks like it was negative 20 miles per hour. And so we're going to have to correspondingly go down to here on the velocity versus time graph. And it was um, negative 20 for half an hour and then what did it become? Then it jumped back up to positive 20 like that until the end of three hours and then what? It became, let's see, it um, in, a, in the course of half an hour it went from 150 to 180 so that's 60 miles an hour And it did that for half an hour. And then how did it finish finally? Uh, 40 miles an hour. So as you can see, there is a corresponding graph when you have distance versus time. There's a corresponding graph velocity versus time. But it of course looks very different than the distance versus time graph. And that's because the distance is captured here as the area under the curve. So these flat lines, they no longer mean that we're not moving. They just mean that we're moving at a constant velocity. One thing that we now see, though, is that what we were calling area, we're going to have to further expand its definition. Not only does area not have area units, but we're going to have to allow for negative area. Because obviously down here, we're going backwards and so if we're saying that the area under the curve is the distance we've traveled then if we're traveling backwards we're going to have to call these areas below the um, horizontal axis we'll have to call those negative areas and so because this is like area but not exactly like area namely it doesn't have the right units and it can be both positive and negative we're going to give this area a special name we're going to call it signed area. So for example the signed area here is 75 times 2. It's an area of 150 miles. The signed area here is negative 20 times 0.5. We're going to say that it's the signed area of negative 10 miles. And so to review what we learned last time is that we can talk about the distance being the area under the curve in an R versus T graph, but it's area with a twist. And so we've given it a new name. We're going to call it signed area as a way to reflect the fact that while it's like area, it certainly doesn't have units of area and it can have both positive and negative values. So let's do a little practice. Again, I think it's so important in this course that you actually work through the examples rather than just listen. So I've provided a couple more. Let's see if we can't take this distance versus time graph and turn it into its corresponding uh, rate versus time graph. So we started out and how do we find the rate? Well the rate is the slope. We went a distance of 40 miles and we did it in one hour. So that tells us that the rate was 40 miles per hour for that first hour. So we'll start there and we'll go across here until we've got an hour. Now what's going on here? I've got a flat line 
in distance versus time. That means we covered no distance for this hour. This would be a windy stop or something. And so that means our velocity was zero. So let's put that in here. So that's going zero miles an hour. And what about from hours two through four? Well, we went down by a distance of 40 miles and we did it in two hours. So the slope here would come out to negative 20 miles per hour. And so that's just what we're going to do. We're going to go down here to negative 20 and go for two hours. So there you go. We've converted from distance versus time to rate versus time. More precisely, velocity versus time. Let's try it the other direction. Let's go from a velocity versus time graph to a distance versus time graph. So initially, what do we have? We travel for 30 miles an hour, and we do it for one hour. So we'll start out here. And after one hour, we should be at the 30 mile mark. Something like that. Next, what happens? Absolutely nothing, because our velocity is zero, so we don't go anywhere. And this translates on the distance versus time graph as saying that our distance remains unchanged for an hour. Okay, What happens in this third hour, from the second to the third hour? We are going backwards 10 miles an hour. That's a slope of negative 10. So while we made it up to 30 here, over the course of an hour we should retrograde, we should regress down to 20 miles distance. And finally, the last hour we move forward at a velocity of 40 miles per hour. So we start out at 20, we're going to end up after four hours at 60. Hopefully that's uh, clear to you. It's worth going back and forth on these examples. Practice is what really deepens your understanding. So what have we learned? Well, the main result was that when we graph R versus T, and we learned to call the R more precisely uh, velocity, when we graph that, then the area underneath the graph of velocity gives us the distance traveled. Okay, This is the distance. But because it turned out that the so-called area had different units than typical area, and because it could be both positive and negative, we decided to give it uh, a distinctive name. We're going to call it signed area. And finally, we did some practice uh, moving back and forth between D versus T and R versus T graphs. There's no substitute for doing some of the exercises that I've provided uh, to really get the concept firm in your mind.